Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We have some more price predictions for you guys today, taking a look at some of the new cards that we have gotten in the past couple of days and kind of talking through what could be their price within the first day of the web app EA Access rising into the first week or month or so of FIFA Ultimate Team. This is very useful if you're somebody who is trying to build a team and you're trying to get kind of a guesstimation, kind of a ballpark range of what some of these players might be priced early on in the early game, just to kind of give you a ballpark. This might not be exact, of course. We don't know what EA is going to bring out for tradable pack supply, uh, if they're going to do something different this year, if they're going to mess with the pack weight for some of these players. We just don't know all of that stuff. But I am going to give kind of a good guesstimation based off of what I think prices would be like, based on what is meta, based off of what prices were last year, and just knowing the foot community and how they value cards in the first early portion of... This game, FIFA 21 Ultimate Team, which is, we are 15 days away, by the way. We are 15 days away from the supposed release of the web app. So we are two weeks away from being able to most likely get access to our foot clubs and get the show on the road. That is very, very exciting. So today we're going to be looking at some lower rated cards. With last video with this, episode number one, we looked at a lot of guys that were, you know, Messi, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Neymar, those types of players. We're going to be looking at more lower tier, overpowered, OP, popular, Alfonso Davies, Rashford, as you saw in the thumbnail, Ben Yedder, of course, uh, Lucas, I want to talk about his card. He's kind of an interesting situation this year. Uh, and then some of the new cards that we just got released yesterday, some of those prices are going to be very interesting because we had a lot of interesting position changes, maybe some stat boosts or downgrades, and that affects price on the market. So let's first talk about Marcus Rashford, right? The upgrade to the 85 rated card from last year, but also the position change to left mid. And boys, let me tell you, if you go down through the FIFA 21 players list on Footbin, there are so many left mids in the Prem and also in the game, there are so many left mids that are in this game this year. Right mids and right wings are going to be a position that I focus on heavily in the early stages because there are just not a lot of options out there. And when there's rarity, that means bigger price jumps. So that's just a side note. But this Marcus Rashford card, how much is he going to be priced this year? I kind of looked at Leroy Sané's card last year as a pretty similar comparison um, because Leroy Sané and this Marcus Rashford have very similar statistics. Of course, Sané was a bit faster, but he had less physical. He also doesn't have the five-star skills or the four-star weak foot that Rashford does have. So I think Rashford is honestly a better card than the Sané for FIFA purposes. Last year, the Sané, day one was 94K. Of course, you know what happened after that, the inflation of the market. And this is a very meta popular card. He rose all the way up to, in the first month's time frame, 240,000 coins on the PlayStation and up to about 200k on the Xbox. So, um, a guy like this Marcus Rashford at his peak, I would definitely not be surprised if he's upwards of 250 to 300,000 coins, depending on the pack weight, maybe even 350k at his very most, just depending on what kind of hype is out there, if this card is really meta in game, and if he just kind of rides the hype wave, right? But I might see a card like this starting out in the early days of like 150,000 coins, and then from there quickly rising up to 200k to 250,000 coins in that range. I know it seems crazy expensive that a card like that Rashford would be that much, but he's Manchester United, he's a left mid, he's English, uh, he's got the five-star skills and that four-star weak foot, which is very, very appealing to players in FIFA these days. So I think he's going to be around uh, 150 first day and then rising up to about 300, 350,000 coins as a max as we get into that first month and as we see prices rise. I know it seems crazy, but trust me, it's not. All right, second player, Furland Mendy, the plus three upgrade on the most unpackable 80 rated card we have ever seen in FIFA Ultimate Team last year. This dude was 80 rated. We kept thinking he's going to get supply. He's going to drop. He was extinct at 10,000 coins. He went basically extinct at 40k. They upped his price range to like 60 or 70k, I think. The dude was at like 50,000 coins for the next month or two, right? This guy was 10,000 extinct all the way up to 50k. It was just the beginning of the French La Liga meta back lines. This guy had all the links to Lenglet, Varane, Umtiti, all those starter left backs that everybody was using and building up towards in foot. This year, 
I think this card is going to be even more expensive. It makes sense, right? With the stat boost, the still. Everybody's used to playing with the French defensive lines with all the special cards that we had last year. French center backs, Baran, uh, again, uh, Langley, the summer heat cards, the Ramos, you know, those types of players. Everybody's used to using these Real Madrid players. Now we have a Valverde card that's 83 rated that a lot of people might want to link to this. And Odegaard, at, um, of course, Real Madrid that people are going to want to link to this Mendy card as well. I would not be surprised if this Mendy starts off this year kind of around like the 30,000 coin range, 25, 30,000 coins, maybe even 40K. I would not be surprised if this card is 100,000 coins inside that first month of FIFA Ultimate Team because the pros are going to be looking at this card. And, you know, even casuals are going to be looking at this because they know who this guy is, right? With the four-star skills, five-star skills. No, he's got four-star skills and a five-star weak foot, right? Yeah, four-star skills and a five-star weak foot. I really don't see a ton of competition for this guy because he just he gets the links to the OP players that at center back. And that's massive for the early game. So I do think that this Mendy card is going to be a top three, top two, top three left back in the game. And his price is going to show it early on in foot. 100,000 coins in my mind in the first month. I think he hits six digits, which seems crazy uh, for a left back. It's 83 rated, but he's got the hype. He's got the links. He's got the entire package to get there. Let's move on to another French overpowered beast. Ben Yedder this year being an 84 rated card. This is his card last year. Of course, uh, Ben Yedder was a guy that we always knew about. I think we kind of knew about him in like FIFA 18, FIFA 19. And then FIFA 19 at the end, he really started to get popular with his team of the season card. Uh, and then, of course, this year with FIFA 20, he really came onto the scene. Uh, and it was kind of one of the biggest, I guess, rats or memes of FIFA 20. The guy started out at 17,000 coins day one, instantly went to 40, and then peaked at 64,000 coins within that first month time frame of FIFA 20. I would expect this guy to start off around 30 to 40,000 coins, maybe even 50K this year. He did, did get a plus one boost uh, to an 84 rated card this year. Uh, but his stats are basically the same on his FIFA 21 card. So I think he's going to start off at around 30, 40, maybe even 50,000 coins first day. I think this card is going to be one of those others that go right around 100,000 coins or over, maybe even 150K for the 84 rated Ben Yetter card. You're like, yo, you, you actually think his price is going to double? I actually think his price is going to double and then some because it just overpowered. People know this card. And of course, last year, his price really died off because... You know, I, I know we did have the ones to watch last year, um, but people were willing to pay this much for a gold card, 64,000 coins, and he didn't have as much hype as he had all of this last year in FIFA 20. I think this card is going to be 100,000 coins for sure, even as an 84 rated. He just has to be, right? Because this is the guy that a lot of people are going to want in their squads. As long as the meta is staying the same, as far as I'm concerned, it is, or it's close to it. People are used to playing with Ben Yedder, Mbappe, and Neymar. Why would they change, right? Why would they go away from the rat, all right? They're going to stick with him. And they're going to pay whatever they have to pay to have Ben Yedder in their team. Let's move on to a right mid in the Prem. His 83 rated card this year in FIFA 21 is a right mid. This is Lucas. And again, four-star, four-star. I mentioned earlier that it is a very... Hard right mids in the Premier League and right mids in FIFA 21 are going to be a hard commodity to come by. Also, I just noticed my foot bins in light mode. Usually it's in dark mode. Let me flip that. Thank you, EA Sports. All right, there we go. That looks way better. I don't know why I was in light mode, man. It was everything was just blind to me. Anyways, um, last year, Lucas Moore, a center forward card, started off day one around, what is this, 20K? And then he instantly boomed to 50,000 coins and eventually peaked at 68,000 coins within that first month, first or second week in league time frame. Uh, this guy's going to be cheaper this year because he is a right mid. It's the same situation as Hyun Min Sun from last year, which we talked about in episode number one. Sun was a center forward, just like Lucas last year in FIFA 20. But now with his position changed to left mid and with the Lucas position changed to right mid, that's going to devalue the cards just a little bit because they're not as linkable at striker, at cam, at center mid with all those position changes in there. They're only going to be available at right wing, right forward and uh, right mid with their cards that they have for FIFA 21. So Lucas this year for FIFA 21 is probably going to start off around the same price range as like 20,000 coins, even as an 83 still. Then he's probably going to boost up to maybe around 50K at his absolute highest. Uh, I still think he's going to get decently high in price because there's just kind of a lack of right mids in the prem. 
uh, and in the game in general. So I do think this card will hit 50,000 coins at some point this year. And I'm kind of basing it off of what Sterling was last year. Sterling was 160K first week. Riyad Mahrez was around 25,000 coins. So maybe even that Lucas card could drop down a little bit, start off at 20K and only go up to 40,000 coins. But I think people know Lucas is like a perfect beginning of the game FIFA-esque card. He's got the skills. He's got the weak foot. He's got that pace down the wing. So I do think he's going to maintain a pretty high price. Kind of his only, his only competition, to be completely honest with you, is one of these new uh, wingers that was actually released today. Uh, again, Alan St. Maximin, a left wing, another prem left mate. He was a right wing last year. Uh, we'll talk about some of these guys in a second. Willifred Zaha, left mid, left wing in the prem. Daniel James and Adama right now are the quote unquote cheap beasts that we have for the right sides this year. Adama purely with his pace, 96 pace, 86 dribbling. That's going to be an expensive card off the rip in FIFA 20. Uh, I would not be surprised if this starts off at 20K and rises to 40, 50,000 coins himself in that first maybe weekend. Now, you might think that's, steep, that's kind of, you know, going way over the top, but with the lack of right wings in the Prem and, you know, that, that, um, that card looks better than this Daniel James, in my opinion. So I think people would, would definitely end up choosing um, the right wing speedster Adama over um, Daniel James. So that's just kind of my opinion. But just watch out for some of these guys like Lucas, man. Maybe even Mares this year, Salah, other right mids in the Prem. Keep a close look on those cards because those are going to be very, very investable. We're going to be watching that kind of section, that kind of um, player pool when the full database comes out, which by the way, full database could be today. That is a very, very real thing. We could be seeing the full FIFA 21 player database released today on, I guess what, EA's website. So we'll kind of look out for that. There's one more card that I wanted to look at and I got to find him for you guys because he was his rating was released today and everybody is talking about this guy right here, Alfonso Davies. Fonzo, as they call him, or Fonzie. 81 rated, so we got a big boost last year from his silver card. Again, 96 pace is the big draw to this card, and this has the writing on the wall, just like last year, very similar to Ferlan Mendy and his 80 rated card. Now, is this card automatically going to be the same price as what Ferlan Mendy was last year? Absolutely not. There's no way, uh, in my opinion, that A, the pack weight is going to be the same as it was last year for Ferland Mendy, or B, this guy just doesn't have the amount of hype worldwide that a Ferland Mendy would. Yes, he plays for Bayern Munich. Yes, Bayern and Bundesliga links are looking fantastic for starter teams, but this is not a starter team left back. This is not a guy that's going to be 10, 20,000 coins. This is a guy that's going to be 30, 40, 50, 60, 75,000 coins maybe at his peak because, again, you do have a lot of good links to those Bayern Munich players. And I know that's that seems kind of expensive, um, but with the like top three left backs in this game, in my opinion, I think we have like top four of them. I could really name off the top of my head would be uh, Robertson, left back Liverpool, right? That's like a top tier left back. I'm thinking number two is probably Alex Tellez. I don't even think anybody's including Alexandro in this because his card looks doo-doo. Then we're going uh, with Ferland Mendy. He's probably actually number two. Tellez number three. And then this Davies card is number four. So for me, I think this card is going to be somewhere around the 50,000 coin price range. It's not going to be the same situation as Ferland Mendy. Uh, but I think just with his hype, dude, I honestly think this is going to be like somewhere between 30 and 50,000 coins in that range because this guy is just going to be lightning lightning fast and he's got the appeal of like a future star type player in fifa so that's something that i would definitely keep a close close watch on now let's take a look at some of these cards that we got today we got the best young players we got the what was this the five star skillers and we also got the biggest upgrades or something like that the most improved so i'll take a quick scroll through these and just kind of maybe mention some prices for you guys on these uh, biggest upgrades in here that are pertinent to FIFA. Holland, of course, with a plus 11. We already talked about his price in the last video. Greenwood, shown as a non-rare here, but shown as a rare in some of the promo pictures. Um, you know, this is going to be a card people will start off with week one. If he still has the five-star weak foot, that's going to be a decently usable card, even as a right mid. Uh, Saka as well, with some pace down the left side. Then, of course, there's Davies with a plus nine overall increase. Big time increase there. This is a pretty solid left back card. This Kamara, 
for another, like, this would be more of a starter left back. This guy's probably going to be around, like, 10,000 coins during the web app stages, during the um, during the EA Access time frame as well, but he would drop quickly after that. But that's a stout, solid looking start back, starting squad right back with Dest as well, getting in there is a, is a decent card, but a lot of big boost uh, on this set of ratings. Now these couple, these set right here, the best young players and the five star skillers really gave us some new cards today that I do want to point out to you dudes. Odegaard, 93 rated, confirmed of course, the Davies was in here. The Pulisic confirmed as a non-rare. Diaby looks decent uh, for a speedster down the wing. Vinicius looks dope. Again, speedster down the wing. Oof McConnell looks as OP as ever, just like last year. This guy was getting some love today. Kunde, uh, Sevilla link. So if you're going to have like a Jesus Navas right back, uh, you're going to have a nice little link up here with Kunde. There's some nice Sevilla links, especially if Diego Carlos gets a decent card. You could have some nice links there with French links as well. I tweeted out this Osamen today. This, to me, screams ones to watch. When you have a card like this, get upgraded, plus two, plus three. Like I think he got a plus two. That is like perfect criteria for an EA Sports ones to watch. Of course, this would be probably like a discard OTW or really cheap at the start of the game. Uh, but that's a nice starter gold card, and that could be an investment that we're possibly looking at in the next couple weeks out of packs. Kamara is not terrible as a starter CDM, and then Isak is a starter striker. Uh, looks kind of decent as well those are some of your uh biggest or what are these are the top 20 young guys or something like that best young players under 22 years old so let's look at this last set really fast and talk about this cristiano ronaldo neymar and bape five star skillers this year i don't think there's any in here that i was surprised to see added in um coutinho center attacking mid position change card now this is interesting because he's got not a lot of pace but 88 dribbling 82 passing this is going to be a card that gets used by a lot of people in foot off the rip just because of his dribbling his five star skills and his links that's going to be a popular card right away same thing with usman dembele left wing again this is just another one of those cards that transitioned from right wing to left wing from last year to this year in fifa and it's just overloading like i feel like if if FIFA was a boat right now, the left side of that boat is just tipping because there's so many guys on the left side, so many left wings in this game that it's crazy. Promes with a position change to center attack in mid. That's going to be a guy you see in a lot of starter teams as well. That's a GG from EA Sports. Uh, and those were kind of like the biggest highlights. Ribéry with a center forward card. That's pretty nice. Quadrado, um, again, this card kind of reminds me of like Jesus Navas' right back card. Not a lot of physical, but there's not a lot of right backs in his league. Bernard Deschi, of course, getting a cam card. David Nera is going to be a great SBC fodder investment all year long. St. Maximum with a left mid. Gelson Martins is a good starter right mid um, in those leagues. El Sharawi even looks decent. He's in a bad league, of course, but that's Italian. and gets some links there. Um, and then rolling down through the rest of this list, eh, not a ton of guys in here. Just some pacey pacey cards that are five star skillers were confirmed getting libertadores cards it looks like uh maybe since this is the same last year design it's actually not confirmed yet but i mean if they're showing these guys as um Conmebol bowl libertadores that would make me think that we're going to have those licenses active again inside of fifa 21 so another kind of a longer video today but there's a lot of stuff to go over man there's really just a ton of stuff to go over in terms of these prices uh, I might even end up doing another one of these videos for even like lower tier, even some other meta players that get released. Maybe we'll do like surprise ratings um, and, and look at some of those prices of meta cards that you guys want to look at when we get the full database. Hopefully that is today. So again, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, drop those down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash a thumbs up on it. Again, comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace.